Hello guys, welcome to Solving Solutions in Bahan Channel where I get solutions to all your solving problems. It's 9th Avenue class again today. How have you been? On today's tutorial, we are going to show you how to carry out um, spatial interpolation. Now we are still um, trying to get more insights from our rainfall data. We have downloaded it, we have extracted the values, we have done um, time series analysis, and then we want to believe that maybe the data you got for your own presentation was for maybe the stations maybe the rainfall stations they are not as much as what we have so let's say you have them um, the rainfall data for about maybe 10 or 5 and points or maybe even more maybe 20 because we are having about 225 so they are not actually as much as what we got but then um, we actually got the rainfall data of some points and then you want to interpolate because um, generally what um, special interpolation does is that it allows you to estimate the rainfall values or it allows you to estimate values in areas where you don't have direct measurements right good so it takes discrete point measurements and estimates the value at on sample location based on the spatial relationship among these points so if you don't have as many points as we do and then you want to know the maybe the rainfall value of maybe some other locations from the observations on the station points you can use um, these um, special interpolation techniques to now um, get the data for those other points right good so there are different methods the inverse direct weight the kriging the spline and then there is a procedure or maybe yeah there are steps to perform the interpolation using what um, qgs right good so now we are actually on QGIS and then if you look closely we have XY and then we have the name then we have the point underscore X point underscore Y and then we now have the rainfall values for the different years now one thing to note is that when you are working with um, interpolation techniques most of the times you need to leave your data in a projected coordinate reference system because some of them use them um, linear measures right good so instead of having it as lat and long we have um, converted it to eastern and northern so that um, we have our units in what um, in linear units and then by that our projection is in um, a projected coordinate reference system our coordinate system is in a projected coordinate reference system right good so that's one thing to note so to start the interpolation we come to the processing toolbox and then we search for idw because um, that's the interpolation technique that um, we are going to use we open it up then for the parameters to impute definitely we have what the um, interpolation utm as what um, the vector data then the interpolation attribute remember we have the rainfall values for different years right good 2019 20 21 22 23 so if you want to carry out the interpolation for the different is you just alternate the values and um, when we mean alternate the values you come to this point where you have the um, interpolation attributes at first you can use 2019 when you are done with that you come back you use 2020 up to what the last year of study right good so that's how you just alternate the values so that's the um, the attribute we are trying to use for the interpolation then we try to what add it the type let's leave it as point and then this same um, distance coefficient let's leave it as m2 um, because it um, ranges from one to three then um, the extent let's use um calculate from layer and then let's calculate from the layer extent right good that's the data we have on our work environment then for the output let's make this um, 100 by let's say 100 as the case may be or maybe 150 as the case may be right good so that will be okay that's 110 and 150 okay that's fair enough so with this we are trying to carry out the idw interpolation that we want to believe we have um, just a few points which might be your case and then we want to now as um, interpolation does we want to estimate the rainfall values in areas where we don't have direct measurements so that is what we want to do so we are going to save to file good so we have navigated to our folder of choice we call it interpolation and then let's just say this is um, idw and then we click on save so i um, haven't fixed all the parameters okay 
let's run good so we have an output somewhere around there and then from this output we can decide to double click on the layer select symbology then we make this um, single band pseudo color we make this equal interval maybe if you want it to be four classes or five classes depending on the number of classes you want you can also decide to reduce this to two so that um, the label description will have um, two decimal places right good and then if you have um, a unit let's yeah it's actually in meters now because we have converted it from millimeters to meters right then for your color ramp you can decide to use the color ramp that is here or you create a new color ramp or yes dm edit them an existing color ramp but for the purpose of the tutorial let's see okay that's too good already let's see if we can use them um, spectral depending on what you want to use though so if we decide to use this okay so just um apply and then okay good so we have them um, some distinctions right good so if we decide to take this to the top move to top and then the symbology can decide to make it 0.5 and then for the stroke make it transparent then for the fill color i can decide to make it um, black okay let me make it one so it will not be completely um, out of sight then we come to the labels single label the font type let's give it tauma then for your style we can make it bold and then we make the size about five five points right good then i haven't fixed that we can just apply and see how it's coming up okay we've not selected the value to use for the value to use let's use 2019 because that's the year of interpolation right good so we apply so sometimes it's very important to apply before you close right good so haven't applied we can decide to now see what we've got and we click on ok so we can take this out so we now have the interpolated value so this simply means the reason why we had to show the sample points we have so that we can have um, a better perspective of the values that um, have been displayed right good so the lower values are having um, the reddish coloration and then the higher values are having what the bluish coloration so this simply means that if we now click on any other point on the surface because we now have a continuous surface any other point on the surface that does not have um, the real for data good so we have the identified features right good so we select our our surface and if we click on any other point it is going to give us what the rainfall value at those points right good so this is 5.2 if we come down here this 4.9 come down here this 4.8 if we go up here this m 5.46 and all of that so this now helps us to estimate what the rainfall values on points that um, we did not have what direct observations or direct measurements on right good so thanks for coming to class we hope um, we have provided solution to this particular solving problem we are still trying to get insight from the rainfall data we have downloaded and then we hope to see you on the next tutorial ensure you keep staying safe and have a fantastic time bye